just to raise your hand, who plans on creating generations of wealth for their children and their children? Anybody here? I didn't meet my father until I was 15 years old. I was walking in the mall and I seen my father walking with my grandparents. And I knew it was him because he looked like me. So I'm 15, I run up to my father, I give him a hug. He didn't act like he was happy to see me. So I still, you know, I always dreamed of the day when I met my father. And I felt like it would be different than the day when I did meet him, but I still continue to love my father. Five years later, my father gets diagnosed with stage four cancer. I'm 20 years old and I have a decision to make. Do I be there for my father and show up for him like he didn't show up for me? Or do I turn my back on him like he turned his back on me? So I make the decision to go see my father every single day in hospice. I took care of my father. I supported my father. I told my father I loved him. I actually had to bathe my father. I had to pick up my father. I had to feed my father. I had to do all the things that my father hadn't done for me. And I didn't realize that my father was setting me up for generational wealth. I didn't realize that my father was helping me to get in alignment with the purpose that I had for my life. So my father died three months later and the time that I shared with him, he never gave me an apology. He never told me why he wasn't there, but we spent that time together and it was great. So when my father took his last breath, I was laying in the bed next to him and I heard him gasping for air and I heard him take his last breath. And hearing somebody take their last breath, it's like something you, you can't never ever replay. I never got the reason why he wasn't there. I never got a I love you. I never got anything from my father other than the fact that I was there for him, but he had never been there for me. So I lost my father and he died of cancer. And now I'm left in this world trying to figure out why I don't feel loved. So I have this void in my life as a man as a man in this world that grew up without his father, I have a void in my life on why my life is the way it is. I know that I'm supposed to be successful. I know that I'm supposed to be a leader. I know when the teacher asked me when I was 12 years old, she said, what do you want to be? I said, a millionaire. I had never met a millionaire. I had only seen millionaires on TV. I didn't know how to make a million dollars. The only way that I knew to make money was from what I saw in my community. The people I saw in my community were drug dealers, drug kingpins, hustlers. I didn't meet a millionaire until I was an adult. So when she said, what do you want to be? I said, a millionaire. She said, well, then you have to be in the 1%. I didn't know what the 1% was. She said, the 1% are the ones that build generational wealth. She said the 1% are those that leave a legacy for their children and their children's children. I said, that sounds like something that I want to do. She said the 99% are the people that leave debt, generations of debt. She said the 99% are the people that make excuses for why they are the way they are. She said the 99% are the people that use their past and the hurt of their past to keep them from their goals. So now what do I do to build wealth? What do I do to change my lineage? What do I do to change my family? What do I do to make my family proud? Martin Luther King said, he said, if I can't fly, I'ma run. He said, if I can't run, I'ma crawl. He said, if I can't crawl, I'm going to walk, but by all means, I'm going to keep moving forward. So I listened to it over and over and over and over again. And I realized that if I wanted to move forward, like Martin Luther King said, then what I had to do was I had to forgive my father. And I had to move forward. And I had to realize that 
I cannot allow my father to keep me from the mentors that I needed in this life. So my mentor, who's a billionaire, he says, look, in order for you to go to the next level, you're going to have to have a new mindset. So the first thing I changed was my mindset. Remember, I was a product of my environment. So pow, pow, pow. I get shot because I'm at the wrong place at the wrong time. I'm in a nightclub. I walk into my car. Somebody shoots me in my face. The bullet goes down my throat, comes out the back of my neck. And I realize I'm on my knees. And now I'm faced with that same question. What is the plan that you have for your life, DeMont? You can't keep using the fact that you didn't have money or you didn't grow up with this or you didn't learn about credit or you didn't learn about wealth creation or you didn't have a father or you didn't feel love. You can't use that anymore because your time is running out. And if you want to change the narrative of your children and their children and their children, then you have to get in alignment with your purpose. So then I meet my millionaire mentor, Steve Nelson, who's here today. And he tells me a story. He said, imagine there being a race. And the race started 400 years ago. And you get in the race, and you're not going to catch up with those people that's been in the race. The only thing that you can do is to work harder to make it easier for the people that are coming behind you. So now I'm not living for me. I'm living for the people that are coming behind me. So the generations that I'm working for and working on behalf of are the generations that are coming behind me. So then he asked me a question. He said, will they know your name in seven generations? So I had to think about it. Will they know my name in seven generations? Seven generations is 150 years. So the decisions that I'm making today, and I'm keeping myself bound because I refuse to open up to a man because I hadn't been loved by a man. In order for me to get to the next level, I have got to unlearn. I had to accept the fact that yes, I, maybe there was a period of time when I was unlearned, but now I'm in alignment. So now because I'm in alignment, I'm able to get the things that I need in order to move forward. I didn't realize what I needed. All I knew was that I had told that teacher that I was going to be a millionaire. All I knew was that I was told that teacher that I was going to be a leader. So now we are here. We are here. And I hear a song because I'm looking for the blueprint because I had made the money. But I lost it. I made my first million when I was 24 years old in real estate. But I lost it at 27. Because why? Because I was still holding on to the things of my past. Nipsey Hussle said, open trust accounts deposit racks. That's the structure. So I got the mentor. After I forgave my father, then I was able to open myself up to my mentor. Now I had to build my structure. Because if I don't have a structure, we can't talk about generational wealth. Nipsey said, open trust accounts deposit racks. So that means don't get the cars first. Don't get the liabilities first. Don't start, don't start going to the mall first. He said, open trust accounts deposit racks. Racks is thousands of dollars, money, investments. So a trust account is what I learned from my billionaire mentor. He said, you need a trust so that you can change the next generation. In my mind, I had to unlearn what I had been taught because I had been taught that trust fund babies were bad. Because when I grew up, they said, oh, that's a trust fund baby. So in my mind, I thought trust fund babies are bad. In my mind, I thought credit was bad. My mentor said I needed credit. I've been doing credit for over 30, 23 years. I've been in the credit industry. But my mentor told me credit was good, right? All right, my uncle that raised me, he told me credit was bad.
because I didn't need to owe no man nothing. I needed to pay cash for it. So now I'm in a position where who do I listen to and what do I do? Nipsey said, open trust accounts deposit racks, million dollar life insurance on my flesh. So that means what I have to do is I have to open my trust account. I didn't know how to open a trust account. So I went to my mentor and I said, hey, can I pay you for your time for the next 12 months to teach me about trust accounts? Because we can't have a conversation about generational wealth and not have a structure. You have to first start with your past. And although we don't like to deal with our past and we don't like to bring up our past and, and, and a lot of our families were taught to sweep what's done at home is, is done at home, what's in the past is in the past, that's connected to your structure. That's connected to the wealth that you want to build for your children and their children and their children. So I had to start with the hurt from my father so that when I met my mentor, I could open my heart up to receive what they had for me. So I couldn't listen to what Steve Nelson taught me if I still had daddy issues because in the back of my mind, I'd be saying, something ain't right, it's too good to be true. He, the information he's giving me is not true. So I had to open myself up for the mentor. So levels, mentor, structure, and what's next? Credit. So mentor, structure, credit. Mentor, structure, credit. All right, so I have my trust account. I deposit racks. I have my life insurance. I put it in my trust. Now I'm positioning myself to be a generational person like the Rockefellers. I have my structure. I have credit. The, the, my mentor told me, he said, you need credit. He said, I know you were taught that you need to pay cash for everything. He said, but you need relationships with banks. He said, you'll never be broke again if you have credit. He said, there's over 5,000 banks. So why wouldn't you get your credit together so that you can go to the banks so that now you're able to get the banks to give you the money, OPM, to invest in your ideas? I'm a world changer. I'm going to create millions of millionaires. I said, I'm going to change generational curses by helping people to become financially literate. I said, I'm going to help change the narrative of my family and their family and their children. I, he said, he said, man, like you seem so confident. I want to take you to Starbucks. We started our meeting at Starbucks. And from there on, now he's taught me about trust accounts. That's what Nipsey talked about. He said, start with trust accounts, deposit racks, life insurance policy on my flesh. So when we start talking about how do we fuel our children? How do we fuel the next generation? We fuel the next generation by being in alignment with the structure. When my son comes and says, I want to start a business, I should have a family bank, which is the structure. When my, son, when my child comes and says they want to start their own business, I should know about credit, financial literacy, business credit. I should have a plan for my child so that my child doesn't feel like they're in this world or they're a product of their environment. So that's why we have children that want to be drug dealers, because they don't have a plan, they don't have a structure, they, don't, they hear us talking about things that we don't do. Real estate's how I made my first million. I kind of figured it out. That's why I lost my first million at 27, because I just figured it out because I had the ambition. All of our children don't have that. So we have to take the lead to say, you know what? I'm going to build a structure like the Rockefellers. Or you know what's going to happen? What's going to happen is it's going to be a lifetime of building, just like the icons. Michael Jackson spent a lifetime building his legacy. And when he died, he did not have his trust in order. So what happened? His legacy was exposed to us. He was a private person. Now we know all his business, LA County Court, is public. So because he did not have his structure in place, now his children had to pay probate. 
Now his family had to go through years and years and years of distress, of courts. Prince, six, over six years of, of, of probate. Family members, aunties, uncles, cousins, he didn't even know, came to court trying to claim his inheritance, trying to claim uh, the things that he had built in a lifetime. Aretha Franklin, same thing. Whitney Houston, same thing. Jimi Hendrix, same thing. Bob Marley, same thing. These people like us that want to build wealth and generations of wealth for their family. You don't just work every day in the studio and create song, hit songs that make $30 billion and, and millions and trillions, all these different hits and streams, just to say, oh, I just want to give it to the courts when I die. You don't do that. And we, we, we live in a day and time where information is so available. So in this informational time, Nipsey told you, open trust accounts deposit racks, million dollar life insurance on my flesh, Beamers, Benz, Bentley, or Alex. So that means stop trying to buy a car first when you get some money. You're an entrepreneur, you're laboring, you're building your legacy. Your legacy is, Maya Angelou said, your legacy is everyone that you touch along the way. Put your family first. The Rock, John Rockefeller, he put his family first. That's why we still know the Rockefeller name. Structure, information, credit, and then you have to do the work, right? You have to do the work. But we start with doing the work, and then we have no structure, so then we, when we die, it's gone. So my challenge to each one of you is to do as my billionaire and millionaire mentors told me. You have to have a million, a mentor. The mentor should be 10 or 15 years ahead of you. You have to have good credit. You have to have a structure, and you have to have discipline. Quit asking for more money. Ask for more discipline. Quit asking for more resources. Ask for more structure. Thank you for having me today.